Can faith that produces no work save a person? James addresses this very question in his short epistle. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, and notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? James chapter 2 verses 14 through 20. In this text, having faith and believing are synonymous, but as James points out, the kind of faith or believing that produces no fruit is useless. Even the devils, he says, have that kind of faith. It is nothing more than intellectual assent. The faith or belief that pleases God, true saving faith, is the faith that results in obedience to God's law and acceptance of his provisions for salvation. James's illustration makes the point well. The love of neighbor that would motivate a person to do nothing more than tell his cold, hungry, and homeless brother or sister to depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, is not love at all. And any faith that motivates a person to do nothing but say, I believe, is not the faith that saves. True faith, the kind that saves, is a faith that produces positive behavioral changes. It is a trusting conviction that motivates a person to repent, change his heart and his mind, and bring his life into harmony with the will of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt be saved, does not mean that all who give intellectual assent to the story of Jesus shall be saved. The believing that saves is the kind of believing that results in repentance and conversion. The book of Hebrews states that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It was assurance and conviction that moved the men and women of Old Testament times to perform positive deeds in compliance with God's will. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and many others obtained a good report through faith. In verse 39. In all these examples, we see the principle that James so plainly sets forth, that genuine faith, or saving faith, is the assurance and conviction that produces action. Such faith, then, is interrelated with and inseparable from repentance. Paul writes, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Some believe that this statement conflicts with James's comments on faith and works, but nothing could be further from the truth. Paul is writing of the kind of faith James commends. James commends the faith that produces works. And this is precisely what Paul has in mind when he says that salvation comes by God's grace through faith. As his next statement clearly shows, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The author of Hebrews speaks of the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. 
The way repentance and faith are put together here reflects the writer's understanding of these foundational doctrines. They are two interrelated aspects of one important subject. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.